And now, on Prophetic Faith. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to another week's broadcast here at Prophetic Faith. I'm Pastor Robbie Barrett, pastor of Excelling Faith Ministries in Tazewell, Virginia. Tonight we are going into part two of volume five of Distractions. We've been learning about how the enemy is concealing things to keep you bound. I promise you it's what you don't know is what is hurting you. Now, here's the thing where I have to challenge you. Because so many people, I've been in ministry for quite a few years now, and this is something that I've dealt with time and time before, and that is people thinking they know. They think they know about healing. They think they know about prosperity. They think they know about the peace of God. They think they know these things, but they really don't know. But tonight, we're uncovering the things. We are revealing the secrets of darkness, and God is setting us free. So let's get to get on into this message, and God is really going to bless you. I'll see you at the end of the program. Oh, part one, we learned about seeking first the kingdom of God, right? If those of you who were here on part one, you realize and remember what I said about how the enemy has twisted that statement. He has twisted it to, he's got you seeking after things, and then once you get the things, you'll seek after the kingdom, but you'll never get those things. He'll always have you chasing, but never obtaining. Come on. Jesus told you the strategy to get the things that you want. How many want some things? Come on, there's nothing wrong with wanting things. God has created things for you. The Bible even says that he will not withhold no good thing from you. But here's how you get it. He said, you seek first the what? The highest knowledge. You seek first my kingdom. In other words, there's a time that you need to set aside to seek after me and to get revelation. Because once you get revelation, guess what? You pull down those barriers that the enemy has put up in your life. Somebody say amen if you're getting this today for me. Amen. All right, so Jesus, he was explaining the kingdom, right? Do you know what that means? He was taking Logos and making it Rhema. Let me say it again. He was taking Logos. He was telling them the word. But then he was explaining it. You know what that is? That's Rhema. Do you know what I'm doing to you right now? I'm giving to you Rhema. How do I know I'm giving you Rhema right now? How many knows what Romans 10 says? It says, how can they hear without a preacher? Then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. That word word is rhema, hearing by the rhema of God. So every anytime you hear preaching and you're paying attention to it, rhema is coming forth. I'm taking the logos and giving you rhema. Somebody say hallelujah. All right, so what did this benefit, Martha? Nothing. All this revelation is going on. All this knowledge is going on. But it didn't profit her anything. Distractions concealed to keep you bound. So let me assure you again in here this morning that you can think you know something, but really not know it. Now, I told you I was going to answer you to, I was going to give you the answer on how I know that. Here's how you know. Watch this. This is how you think you know something, but you don't really know it. Are you ready? It's not manifested in your life completely. Oh, I know about healing. Pastor, I know what the Word says. I know, I know, I know. Are you healed? That's the question. Now listen to me. 
if you're not healed, you know what that means? You need to get some more knowledge. Amen? Oh, I know, what the, I know what the word says about finances. Lord, I know he'll provide. I know he'll take care. I know he'll do all those things. Are you still struggling? Well, yeah. Not as much as I used to be. Okay, well, that tells me that you got some knowledge, but there's more to go, right? So we need to get more knowledge. So this is a clear indication. If, if I truly know something, then it'll manifest in my life. Amen? Now, I'm going to give you an example. I'm not going to leave you there. Watch this. Go to Mark 14, 27. This is going to be good. Watch this. It says, And Jesus said unto them, All of you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, it is Logos, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Now look at what Peter says. Then Jesus says, but after I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. Next verse. But Peter said unto him, although all shall be offended, yet will I not. I won't be offended of you. Next verse. And Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto you that this day, even this night before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me how many times? Three times. Next verse. Is that it? Okay. So Peter goes on to begin to rebuke Peter again. How many knows that Peter's got a habit of this? Oh, no, I'm telling you, I will go to prison. I will even give my life for you. And Peter and Jesus just let him go on. How many, how many knows that sometimes you just need to let people go on, right? Now, watch this. I'm going to show you an example. Jesus gave a word. He gave a word, right? But guess what? Peter heard it as Logos. Peter thought he knew. I told you I was going to give you an example of so many people think they know. This was one of them. Peter thought he knew. Oh, yeah, I know what you're saying, but look here. It's not happening to me. I'm not going to deny you. I'm not going to go back on this. But then watch this. This was what Jesus was telling of him. Now, we touched on this a few weeks ago. You remember what Jesus said? He said that Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, to make your faith fail, but I prayed that your faith wouldn't fail. This is what, watch this. Now, we, we talked about how it was a past tense thing, but it was also talking of future things to come. This was it. Watch this. Peter was so distracted that he couldn't receive that knowledge. And it almost, watch this, it almost cost him his faith. Let me show you what I mean. Go on down in Mark for me, Dave. Verse 67. Look at what, look what happens here. It says, And when, he, when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, Thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. Next verse. And he, but he denied it, saying, I know not, neither understand what you are saying. And he went out into the porch and the cock crew. Next verse. And the maid saw him again and began to say to him that stood by, This is one of them. Next verse. And he denied it again a little after that they stood by said again to Peter, Surely you are one of them. You are an Galilean. And thy speech agrees also. Next verse. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom you speak. Next verse. And the second time the cock crew, Peter called to mind the word. Huh. What do, you, what do you understand when you hear that phrase? He called to mind that word. Rhema. The first time Jesus told it to him, it was Logos, and he didn't understand it. He had a lack of knowledge, and it almost cost him his faith. Let me tell you why. Watch this. It says, and he, when he thought of this, he wept. How many knows that Peter almost lost it? He, he, he lost his identity. He lost who he was. He, he had abandoned the mission. <clears throat> he was back to fishing. 
He almost lost his faith. Why? Because of a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of the highest knowledge. But watch this. This time, that words that Jesus spoke became rhema. And it clicked. Oh, now I understand what Jesus meant when he said, when the cock crows uh, twice, I will have denied him three times. Somebody say, once you know, you know. Once you know, you know. So what am I saying here? Verse, go to Matthew 13, 19. Look at this. Look at what happens here. It says, and when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes Satan to steal it. He catches it away that was sown in their heart. That is that he which received the seed by the wayside. So watch this. How is it that Satan is able to take the word from you and from working in your life? How is he able to do that? By a lack of knowledge. Look at what that says. It says the word is preached to you. It is sown into you. But when you don't understand it, Satan is able to come and put a barrier to where that you can't watch this. You can't see yourself with that. And so, therefore, you can't go there. What's he trying to stop you from knowing? One, one translation, it's either, not, I mean, not one translation, but one gospel, it's either Mark or Luke says, immediately he comes. As soon as the word is sown, immediately he comes to try to, to, try to take that word. And the only way he can take it is if it's not rhema to you. Watch this. He's using strongholds of distractions to keep you from understanding. Now what do I mean by that? Some of you can hear a certain message of the kingdom. And Satan is able to snatch it immediately. And for everybody in here, it's different areas. For you, it could be health. For, for another one, it could be about self worth for another it could be about finances when these messages go out because you don't have a knowledge of those things satan comes immediately what do i mean what am i saying watch this you can't see yourself as that you can't see yourself healed you can't see yourself blessed you can't see yourself having self-worth Oh, I know other people call me pretty. I know other people call me this and that. But I just don't see it. Barriers. Immediately he comes. Because of a lack of understanding. All right, watch this. You know what God told me one time? <clears throat> he made this statement to me. He said, once, he said, Satan has people blinded. And he said... Once they see, once they have an understanding, his power is gone. Think about what I just said right there. Do you realize that once you have an understanding of who you are in Christ and what belongs to you, that Satan's power is gone? Now you say, how could it be gone? Because his only power that he has over you is a lack of knowledge. Let me go back to that large animal. As long as you have that animal convinced that it can't break free, it won't try to break free, even though you know that it could. And if it wanted to, you couldn't stop it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan knows that if you wanted to, you could break free from his grip. I don't care what it is. I don't care what he's trying to use against you. So he tries to conceal. He tries to convince you that you can't do it. You can't have that. You can't do that. Look at John 5, 1. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. 
Let's read John 5, 1 through 9. It says, And after, the, after this there was a, fe- a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And in these lay great multitudes of impotent folk, of blind, halt, and withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season uh, into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatever disease they had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been there, and how long a time he was in that case, He said unto him, Will you be made whole? And the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. And Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately, somebody say immediately, the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. Okay, now why did I read that? Look at this right here. Look at the difference between knowing and really knowing. You say, what you saying? Look at the difference between knowing and then really knowing. This was a man that knew what it took to be healed, but he really didn't know. You say, how how did he know? Is he still impotent? Come on, somebody. Has it been 38 years? All right, Jesus asked this man a statement. Watch this. Here's the context of that statement. I know the King James says, will thou be made whole? But he was asking a question. He says, would you really like to be made whole? So picture Jesus going up to him and say, hey, would you like to be healed today? Now, why would Jesus ask that question? To us, that seems kind of crazy, right? That's like saying, you know, looking at a a homeless person on the street and saying, would you like a house? Right? This is why. Watch this. Questions spark thinking. Questions spark thinking. Satan knew that, right? That's why he went to Eve, and what did he do? He didn't say, you're going to eat of this tree. He didn't say, I'm going to take you and Adam down and all of your seed. He didn't say any of that. You know what he did? He gave a question. Did God really say? What did that do? That spark thought. Oh. Did he really say that? So here Jesus is, he's given this man a question. Why? Because it's sparking thinking. Because for 38 years, this is all this man thought about, was at a certain season, when that water's troubled, i got to try to make it in first. And then, you know the enemy drilled in his head for 38 years. You won't make it in. You're still going to lay here another year, and then another year, and then another year. But here Jesus sparks a question that makes him question everything he's going through, his whole way of life. You don't have to be this way. Would you like to be healed? Woo, come on. Now, what do you think that did? That sparked thought into him. Oh, that, I've almost gave up on that thought. I don't even know what it's like to be healed anymore. How many knows what I'm talking about? I don't know what it's like to be disease-free. I've been going through these things for so long, I don't even know what it's like. But watch this. Why did he ask him such a question? Because the man had been so distracted. You say distracted by what? By the troubling of the water. So distracted about the certain season. Distracted about who was going to get in front of him. But watch this right here. Look at Psalms 107, verse 20. Look at this. It says, he sent his what? Word. Say that with me, word. 
And what did it do? It healed them and delivered them from their destructions. All right, he sent his highest knowledge and did what? It healed them. Let me say this again. I want you to get it. He sent his highest knowledge and it healed them. It delivered them. How many needs healed in here today and how many needs delivered? He sent his word. Watch this. It wasn't about the season. My God. Come on, somebody. It wasn't about the troubling of the water. It wasn't about who was getting in first and who wasn't. His answer was always there. Turn to your neighbor and say, his answer was always there. It was always there. How do I know that? Watch this. This was a man from Israel. Is that right? We are right smack dab in Israel at the pool of Bethesda. Now look at this right here. Do you think for one second that this man didn't know what Psalms 107.20 said? Oh, pastor, I know what the word says. I know, I know, I know, I know what the word says. Well, guess what? This man knew what this word said. Let me tell you something. You are not an Israel or Israeli, or <laughs> Israeli, an Israelite, Israeli. You are not an Israelite from your birth and not know what the Torah or the Psalms say. They drill it into you. At, by the time you reach the age 12, you have to know all the books of the Torah. That's at your bar mitzvah. Now watch. This man knew what Psalms 107.20 said. He knew that God had sent his word and healed them from their destruction. But guess what? He was so distracted by the troubling of the water by the certain season, by who was making it in first, that he could not receive it. <laughs> he only knew it as Logos. When, my God. When many people say they know what the Word says, here's what they're saying. I know what the Logos says. I know Logos. But it's not good enough to know Logos. You have to know Rhema. Say that with me. I have to know Rhema. I have to know Rhema. I have to take the Logos and I have to, it has to become Rhema to me. So when Jesus spoke these words, watch this. When Jesus spoke these words, rise, take up your bed and walk. The Logos became Rhema. Listen to me. Listen to me. Let me say this again. When Jesus, now Jesus looked at him, watch this. Jesus looked at him and said, rise. Praise God. Is God revealing things to you? Are things beginning to click? Guess what that is? That's not Logos. That's Rhema. The Rhema word of God. God is revealing his highest knowledge to you. And it is setting you free right now. You know what happens when people are set free? They come to the conclusion, I don't have to be sick anymore. I don't have to stay broke anymore. I don't have to be depressed anymore. And guess what? When that happens, the enemy's power is gone. Because that's the power that he has on people, is the lack of knowledge. Look at the man at the pool of Bethesda. He laid there for 38 years. Now, one can say, well, it's because he didn't reach the water in time when some angel came down and stirred up the water. And that's a whole different story in itself. But here's what I want you to see from that, is that the highest knowledge was God is the healer, and He could have called on Him at any time to heal His body. But you see, the enemy kept Him bound in that. The enemy hid that knowledge from Him, and all He knew was, if I don't get in the water first, it's not going to happen for me. See, some of you right now are in specific situations and you think that it's got to be this way or nothing's going to happen for you. I'm telling you right now that that is just the enemy hiding what God really wants to do for you. Get in His Word and look and see what is the highest knowledge. Again, you may think you know, but the question is, do you really know God's knowledge concerning 
whatever situation you're dealing with. I want to pray for you right now that revelation will come. Because when revelation comes, the enemy's power is gone. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I lift up every person that's watching this tonight. They're not watching by accident. Father, I pray right now that they, that revelation comes forth, that their eyes be open to your understanding so that they will receive this highest knowledge. Your knowledge is the highest. And we cast down every knowledge, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of you and your word. And Father, by doing this, I thank you, Lord, that you are setting people free. The enemy's power, the enemy's grip is being broken off of people tonight in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for this. Healing is coming now. Blessings are coming. Prosperity coming. Deliverance is coming to your people. And I thank you for this in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Again, I want to take this time to thank you for watching. And we want to take time to thank our faith partners for partnering with this ministry. If you are not a partner with this ministry, why don't you pray about doing so? God will bless you richly when you partner and sow into good ground. And this is good ground. We are taking this good news of the gospel to as many people as who wants to hear it. And this is good news that we've been preaching here. So faith partners, thank you for your continued support and prayers of this ministry. And those who write to us, call us, just letting us know what a blessing these programs are and how they've helped you. We appreciate that. And if you need prayer, don't hesitate to call us or let us know or contact us on social media. So until then, keep walking by faith. We'll see you right here. Be blessed. If you would like to become a faith partner, please contact us at P.O. Box 264, Tazewell, Virginia 24651. You may also reach us at 276-971-2333. You may also request information at AccelerateFaith.org. Our email for faith partners are faithpartner at AccelerateFaith.org as well.